Letter 116 on self-control. The question has often been raised whether it is better to have moderate emotions or none at all. Philosophers of our school reject the emotions. The peripatetics keep them in check. I, however, do not understand how any halfway disease can be either wholesome or helpful. Do not fear. I am not robbing you of any privileges which you are unwilling to lose. I shall be kindly and indulgent towards the objects for which you strive those which you hold to be necessary to our existence, or useful, or pleasant. I shall simply strip away the vice. For after I have issued my prohibitions against the desires, I shall still allow you to wish that you may do the same things fearlessly and with greater accuracy of judgment, and to feel even the pleasures more than before. And how can these pleasures help coming more readily to your call if you are their lord rather than their slave? But, you object, it is natural for me to suffer when I am bereaved of a friend. Grant some privileges to tears which have the right to flow. It is also natural to be affected by men's opinions, and to be cast down when they are unfavorable. So why should you not allow me such an honorable aversion to bad opinion? There is no vice which lacks some plea. There is no vice that at the start is not modest and easily entreated. But afterwards, the trouble spreads more widely. If you allow it to begin, you cannot make sure of its ceasing. Every emotion at the start is weak. Afterwards, it rouses itself and gains strength by progress. It is more easy to forestall it than to forgo it. Who does not admit that all the emotions flow, as it were, from a certain natural source? We are endowed by nature with an interest in our own well-being. But this very interest, when overindulged, becomes a vice. Nature has intermingled pleasure with necessary things not in order that we should seek pleasure, but in order that the addition of pleasure may make the indispensable means of existence attractive to our eyes. Should it claim rights of its own, it is luxury. Let us therefore resist these faults when they are demanding entrance, because, as I have said, it is easier to deny them admittance than to make them depart. And if you cry, one should be allowed a certain amount of grieving and a certain amount of fear, I reply that the certain amount can be too long drawn out and that it will refuse to stop short when you so desire. The wise man can safely control himself without becoming over-anxious. He can halt his tears and his pleasures at will. But in our case, because it is not easy to retrace our steps, it is best not to push ahead at all. I think that Panidius gave a very neat answer to a certain youth who asked him whether the wise man should become a lover. As to the wise man, we shall see later. But you and I... Who are as yet far removed from wisdom, should not trust ourselves to fall into a state that is disordered, uncontrolled, enslaved to another, contemptible to itself. If our love be not spurned, we are excited by its kindness. If it be scorned, we are kindled by our pride. An easily won love hurts us as much as one which is difficult to win. We are captured by that which is compliant, and we struggle with that which is hard. Therefore, knowing our weakness, let us remain quiet. Let us not expose this unstable spirit to the temptations of drink, or beauty, or flattery, or anything that coaxes and allures. Now that which Panidius replied to the question about love may be applied, I believe, to all the emotions. In so far as we are able, let us step back from slippery places. Even on dry ground, it is hard enough to take a sturdy stand. At this point, I know, you will confront me with that common complaint against the Stoics. Your promises are too great and your counsels too hard. We are mere mannequins, unable to deny ourselves everything. We shall sorrow, but not to any great extent. We shall feel desires, but in moderation. We shall give way to anger, but we shall be appeased. And do you know why we have not the power to attain this stoic ideal? It is because we refuse to believe in our power. Nay, of a surety, there is something else which plays a part. It is because we are in love with our vices. We uphold them and prefer to make excuses for them rather than shake them off. We mortals have been endowed with sufficient strength by nature. If only we use this strength, if only we concentrate our powers and rouse them all to help us, or at least not to hinder us. The reason is unwillingness, the excuse inability. Farewell.